Hey campers, George here, back in the man cave. Gotta tell you, can't focus. <laughs> I want to make three sheaths, and every time I get one out to do it, I get distracted and think about the other one, and so I put my foot down through the dice, and they... So, let's check it out. Do you all remember my combo? Got it all set up, kind of, this guy. The only thing I've done to it was I changed the nail neck on the knife. I wanted it to match this, so they, they look the same. Why? I was trying to focus and walked away from the leather. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, I really like this, this mod. Turned out a way better than I thought it would. It works. It actually works. I was originally just going to put it in my old saw sheath. Then I thought, no, bushcrafty. I've made it that way. I've put a, I put a blade on and a saw. Well, to end it off, you've got to put a ferro rod on it. So I'm going to come up with that. Then I stared at it a little bit more and I thought, it's time to step up on the, the sheets and do something different. This is what I'm going to do. Let's get to the table. So here you can see I worked on the bits and pieces of leather. And fortunately the whole piece came because this would have been a disaster, I think. Too much sewing, too, too many little bitty pieces. So all I did here yeah, was just transfer everything over to the new sheet of leather. I'm lining everything up just to remind myself, marking it out and then I'm going to cut it up. If any of you are thinking about doing this and you want to know the measurements, let me know. Uh, I'll let you know how to get hold of me later on. Yeah, you can see the outline. Basically, that's the strap that's going to fold over the front. And that's the strap that will hold the ferro rod. And you can see the strap will go over the top of the, the, the saw knife combo. The, the way I measure the width is you line the life up and just roll it over. Give yourself a little bit extra for the, uh, the width of the, what you're cutting out. And then I go in quarter of an inch and that's my sew line. That's where I'm going to actually do the sewing, punch the holes. Here I'm taking the measurement, the full measurement of the width. And then I half it and come in quarter of an inch. That's where the sewing will be. Now I'm just going to cut it out. Um, fairly straightforward. A good hint, when you start a new project and you have one of these knives, put a new blade in and just start with a new knife. Otherwise you have to go over and sometimes it gets crooked. Here I'm just showing you how it's going to work. This is going to be, that was the belt loop on the back there. And that's going to tuck in and get sewed in. I was trying to decide what color I wanted to make it because I just I decided then that I was going to actually put the dye on first and then do the sewing and everything, which turned out to be a, a really, really made a big difference. It made the sewing a lot easier. The holes didn't shrink and you had a fight with the needle. Here, this is the, the belt the belt loop. And I'm just putting in the holes uh, for the sewing. I decided at the bottom, it's going to have two stitches. 
stitch lines on the top, just one. Lined it up there, go, folded it over, made sure it looked good, and then sewed the top piece on. And I am horrible at sewing. Uh, it takes me forever. I really have to take my time. It can be frustrating sometimes, but hey. And with this cord, obviously it's wax. And you just light it up, press it in, and it stays there. You should always come back one or two holes when you finish your stitch line. It just makes it harder for it to come undone. There I lined it up. I went three inches. I always make my boat loop three inches. And then I just doubled up to make sure the holes went right through. Sewed it on. Oh, this is going faster than I thought. Uh, this is the five cent uh, snap that I found online. Uh, you can buy them in like boxes of six, a set of six. They weren't that expensive. This is just a leather hole punch. So I can punch the hole through the leather for the snap. And uh, it makes a nice clean hole. The snap goes in and you just hammer the whole thing. I'm just basically lining everything up. Use that to mark where I want the mail. And I just tapped on it slightly to make a good mark. And then I'll go through it further later on. Here are the snap, the snap pieces, four pieces. You've got your male and your female. Fairly straightforward. I thought it would be more complicated than this. I just watched a quick video on Tandy, the hobby people. You see how I'm rocking that uh, pin? It just makes, you make sure you get a nice, clean, solid fit all the way around. Now I'm punching the holes out for the, the sewing of the actual sheath. Tedious. Got to try and keep it straight. And then just line them up. Here, I've got to line up the holes for the ferro rod holder. Because I've already punched those holes. I just lined them up, marked it. I'm just going to punch them. And they line up and... We're off to the races. Uh, it, like I said, it takes me forever to do it. And there you are. We're all done as far as the sewing. Now I'm going to put the snap on. For a moment there, I didn't think it fit. I thought I'd done it too short. I just hadn't pushed the knife in far enough. And there you can see the ferro rod actually fit. That was guesswork for me. I guessed where that ferro rod would go. I got lucky. Cut off that bottom trim. And there you have it now. I just uh, got to finish putting all the stain on everywhere. Um, funny thing is, is when I put the stain on, uh, you don't really see it that well on the video, but it was almost like a, a tiger stripe for some reason was just the way I put it on. You can see a little bit of it there. So I had to match this all to, to at least match it. So it looked like I did it at the same time in one whole thing. You let it dry. Going to now put the, the rest of the snap on and uh, just push it through. Same thing again. And then you hammer the, the other piece on the other side. You do need something solid. Now, when you buy this stuff, it, you can buy these, these little kits. You see that little, I call it the, the snap anvil. And you sit there and tap it around. You've got to be careful. The first, when I did a test on it, I whacked it too hard and it actually damaged the, the snap. It, it cracked. So go slowly. Make sure it's tight when you're done. And there you are. Now I was going to check the fit. Now it's going to be tight. You want your fit to be really tight. And you're going to leave it to, to set. Wait for the, you know, the coating to dry. The leather will shrink when you put that coating. Because you're basically making it wet. So I just put everything in. Set it in there. Leave it overnight. And it shrinks. And it's going to be tight. 
the first time in the morning when you try and take it out it's kind of stiff you almost have to it's like breaking so, the seal finally. so finally i got my ducks in a row <laughs> here it is here i, I kind of like the way it came out i thought it would be just big it's actually not it actually worked out pretty well you know the leather arrived just in time because i was thinking of putting it together with with bits and pieces and i don't think it would have been as good uh this you know having that and this made it so much easier with one piece it worked out the other thing is is that if you look at the leather you can't really see it there but it <laughs> I put I put the the coating on first. I wanted to try that. People have said that you should do that before you do any sewing or anything, and they write. It did make a huge difference. When you do this, the holes stay open longer. It makes it a lot easier to do. Um, I thought about rounding off here, like my other opinals, but this is not like the other opinals. Uh, this is different, and I thought that the square uh, sheath would be better. So it, it actually came out pretty good. Um, I kind of like that beam on it. I wanted to try that. It seems to work just fine. It wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. Uh, it's a, still a little sticky in there. It'll take, it'll, it'll wear in no problem. I just got to keep it in there because it's going to shrink at first. And then over time it stretches. So if you put, if you leave it in there just like overnight until it's dry, it'll be a bit tight the first time you try and get it out. But then after that, once you get it out, you see it, it's tight. But once it's dry and set and you take it out that one time when you put it back in, it, 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 it works fine. So put it in there nice and tight. And then the ferro rod well, was a little worried that wouldn't work. Uh, it actually did, surprisingly. I just guessed and, and hoped it would work, and it actually did. I have that. It's a rubber band on here because you don't want to lose your your ferro rod when you're trudging around. So one thing I haven't done is finished off the edges. So I'm going to do that right now. What? Here we go. Thank you. So I have my tool all here. Amazing. This thing <laughs> fits everywhere. So you just uh, need to put some of this on. It's a burnishing gun. I use that, like I've told you before, some people will just use like uh, beeswax. Uh, there are different kinds of this stuff available. I found this to work just fine. Uh, it's easier to work with. You just put it on, let it sit for a couple of minutes and then just lightly rub it in. And you know, you can see here how it's rough where you've cut. So when you put the burnishing gum on and you rub it in, it smooths it out and cleans it up basically. All along the edges where you cut the leather, um, like along here, just slap it on. Don't need any, don't have to be too precise. It'll spread when you rub it. So I'm just gonna <laughs> let that sit for a while use gloves. I was too lazy to get them. <laughs> Let that sit for a couple of minutes. All I'm going to do is just uh, rub it using this. All these uh, little ridges here, different sizes, so you find the one that best fits. I normally just use the big one to start and then I go to the smaller one and all I do is I'm just rubbing it in and it kind of rounds off all the edges for you. I'm not even pressing hard and uh, it'll soak in there it really makes a nice if it look, if a good finish you know just spend some time rubbing rub the outside like this nothing is easy well this is easy but it's like everything else like sandpapering <laughs> just takes up some time that's all Fortunately, not a lot of time. So, so you just want to clean up those those whole edges. Now, here I like to give it a good rub in the top here, and kind of open up the top opening where the 
saw is going to go in. It just spread it a little bit like that. It makes it easier for you to put the saw back. Sorry, the Oppenheim multi-tool bushcraft style thingy into the sheath. <laughs> Rub on it. Get all those edges done. So there you go. See it there now. Now these edges don't have that furry stuff on them. There's still a bit of gum left. It'll you can wipe it off or just leave it on and it'll soak in. And you can see it it cleans up the edges nicely and kind of gives it a better finished look on on the leather. So we're gonna put it back in and we'll leave it overnight and it'll dry up and it'll be hopefully peachy keen. <laughs> Snap that in, put this guy in, it's like that, and uh, fortunately you can see this is not round, it's actually uh, almost flat on one side which just sits against there perfectly, so didn't plan that, <laughs> and there you have it, and of course your snap there with the 5 cent, I like the way this worked out. I have to say, probably the best project I've tackled really came out well. I took my time on everything, tried not to rush anything. I nearly did on the sheath, fortunately got a grip <laughs> and uh, waited and like not even 30 minutes later they delivered the, the leather, so I lucked out there. The other thing is, is that I bought the leather. It's actually the same leather as my last couple of sheets from the same people, the same product. But this leather felt different, especially on this side. It wasn't as furry on this side, uh, which which was nice. I think it's a better, a much better look and feel to it. It really felt a lot better. I suspect that it's hit and miss. You know, it depends on who did the tanning and where they get the leather, leather from. I mean, they ask for certain sizes and thicknesses and all that whatnot and how it's tanned. And don't forget, like, share, subscribe. <laughs> you know the story. Pretty sure I'll be back. Um, like I said, I, you know, I got a little sketchy there and couldn't make a decision on what I was working on. There's two sheets I want to make. Uh, four knives that are one is a little whittler that I have I uh, need to go trudge I have uh, my uh, Victoria Vic, Victoria Knox thingy I got to look at I'm just running late I needed to get certain things done uh, but I am catching up I got really far behind on my videos so I'm feeling a little bit better about myself and you will be safe out there <laughs> Especially with these things, you know, they, it's a sharp and shiny and it's got a saw with lots of little pokey things on it. So. As always, always appreciate your support. You guys have been great. I try to answer every comment. Uh, if you have questions or you have any ideas of another project, let me know. If you do a project, send me the pictures. We'll put them on. Show everybody. Uh, you know, the whole idea of me doing this is not just to make me feel good. <laughs> well, it does. But it's to show you that just about anybody, if I can do this, anybody can do it. Um, you, you see me, I have no tools. I, I, I do it the hard way. And you can. It's not, a, it's not a big deal. Just take your time, think about what you're doing. And, you know, hopefully you'll come up with a great project. If you do, send it to me. The best way, go to my uh, Facebook page. The Novice Survivalist. And from there you can message me. Because apparently my email doesn't work on YouTube. <laughs> and you know, I'd love to hear from you guys. And send me pictures and show me things. If I show you a knife and you have a, a vintage version of it or something like that. Take a picture and send it to me. I'd love to see them. And we can post them and share them and all that good stuff. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.